In this video, I'm going to learn about NHRA drag racing. guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now this, after last week, had to be done. Uh, last week was my first foray into NHRA. Prior to that, being based in London, being based in the UK, we don't really get any coverage of NHRA here. So when I reacted to that video last week, I was amazed to realize just how big of a sport, how big of a thing it is in the States. I think I read that there's 4, 45,000 registered participants of the NHRA, which I believe makes it the biggest uh, motorsport in terms of uh, participation in the world, which is just a crazy, crazy number. And the acceleration that some of these uh, funny cars that they're called, the uh, the ones that are pointed, the ones that kind of resemble the uh, the X-wing jet fighters from Star Wars, they can get up to I think it's uh, 350 plus miles an hour, but they can accelerate to that top speed in like two seconds or something crazy, just absolutely mind-blowing stats. Like uh, last week when I uh, prior to watching the video, like. I thought, you know, 200, 350 miles an hour is very fast, but I was saying that, oh, you know, that there's production cars out there like the Veyron, like the McLaren P1, like the Koenigseggs that can get there. But what I forgot, what I completely forgot to mention was that obviously these production cars, they get to their top speed after like a minute, maybe two minutes sometimes, you know, with your foot constantly on the gas, you know, constantly progressing up the gears. Whereas these NHRAs, as soon as you put your foot down, bang, it's like zip, nearly it's, or maybe it's even at its top speed within a second or two, just ridiculous cars. So yeah, this video is gonna be really good for me to build my knowledge of the sport, you know, find out what it is, just so that going forward, I've got a bit more of a knowledge base that I can, you know, uh, pull facts from. So let's go. This is gonna be me learning about the NHRA. Let's do it. Man. Just look at that engine. Oh God! So this is what they're so they're rebuilding the cars, uh, the engines there. Because I think they rebuild the engines after each run. Completely tear the engine apart and rebuild it in about 30 minutes. Burn about 15 How? gallons of fuel on a single run, which is only about 3.7 seconds. It's the uh, fastest accelerating vehicle on land, and uh, they're badass. These are 10, 12 wow. thousand horsepower cars. When we launch, it's about 5 Gs. Uh, when we 5 G launch. The top end, it's negative Gs. People in the stands think, oh, you're just going straight. If you're standing back these cars, it's not just going straight. It's driving all over the place, and it's a struggle, and they're beasts. Man, 5 Gs when you launch the car. <laughs> Look at the acceleration. Crazy. NHRA stands for National Hot Rod Association. There's a number of different categories. In the funny car category, we go zero to a thousand feet in under four seconds at over 330 miles an hour. Side by Crazy. side racing, 330 miles per hour, 10,000 horsepower, less than four seconds. Um, Whoa. There's nothing like it. Well, the big difference between a funny car and top fuel is Man. obviously the chassis. We're heavier. We carry a, We have to move more gear just because of the body that goes over the car. Drive line, engine components are basically the same thing. This mm. application is a little bit different. Actually, I've driven, I've had the opportunity to drive both a top hill car and a Look funny at car. That. I got licensed in a funny car last season, and they are, I'll tell you, two different animals. I mean, in a funny car, the wheelbase is so much shorter, so you're steering the thing like no other, all the way down the racetrack, just to keep it straight in the groove, whereas mm. in a top hill drag street, you don't have to do that as much. I also, see. Also, in a funny car, the engine is right in front of you, so when it blows up, Woo! The explosion is in your lap, which Gosh. is a top field car. It happens behind me, and I don't know how bad it is until the end of a run. When I was a kid, top field was always the king of the sport, and I, I remember that since I was a little kid, um, just because they are faster, they're quicker, and that's why I love driving them. 
biggest difference is the ET. Um, when these cars go zero to a thousand feet, our uh, funny cars go over 330 miles an hour. Look at those things the go! It's a little bit quicker in the top fuel cars versus the funny cars, um, but I think we've got them on speed still, so it's kind of cool. Uh, we use nitromethane, which it's one of the only race cars that uses it on the planet. Mm. You stand behind the thing while it's running, the fumes will make you cry, it'll make you cough, choke. Wow. It's uh, really incredible what, the, what these things do. Nitromethane. To nitromethane is a little bit difficult. It's the fuel we burn. It's very controlled fuel. It's a very dangerous fuel. It makes a lot of power. Mm. Um, it's controlled by Homeland Security. Senses, when these cars warm up in the pits, fans love getting it. The sensory of it and uh, the breeze and makes Man. your eyes tear, your nose starts blowing juices and you can't hardly see. Crazy. It's unreal. <laughs> if you get too much of it, you won't be able to breathe. Yeah, we put on gas masks to uh, make sure we can breathe and see. Uh, it, it basically takes your breath away and makes your eyes Dude, this is awesome, man. I know I'm not saying much, see but... everything that we're doing in the warm-up and make sure we're not missing anything. We wear our gas masks. I'm just so engrossed in what they're saying, you know? So the nitromethane is really quite toxic, I see. Well, not toxic, but combustible and produces side effects. When the cars come back after a run, they're pulling to the pit. First thing we do is disassemble the car. Mm. It's disassembled within three minutes. Wow. Charge manifold, cylinder heads, pistons, clutch, drive line. That's all done within the first three minutes of coming back to the pit. Basically, three we go minutes. Over every part. Uh, we disassemble the engine, go through the short block, look at all the rod bearings, all the main bearings. Supercharger gets going through. Basically, the rotors come out, strips put back in. Uh, the heads get taken off service. All the seats and everything looked at. Clutch comes out, new clutch pack goes in. Wow. It depends on the crew how long uh, they've been together and how well they gel, but. Uh, the good guys, they can do it in 30 minutes. We're pulling the wires to start the thing back up. Wow. We're building the car in 30 minutes. I mean, we start the car up typically in 29 minutes after it comes back in the pit. After a full service, tearing the engine completely apart, clutches out, rebuild it. Put Incredibly it fast. You know, it's, it's crazy. They work extremely hard. They're covered in dirt, grease, head to toe, oil. I mean, they're, they're covered. Um, in between every single round, and they put their blood, sweat, and tears um, in this race. Wow, car. man, and these guys are awesome. There, and there's a lot of pressure, I think, on all of us. There's a lot of pressure on me because I have four seconds to, to do the best job that I can to keep this car straight in the center of that groove, um, to have a great reaction time, and to make the run worth it um, and worth all the work that they put into it. It takes a whole team to make that car go down the racetrack, and I always give it up to them. The driver always gets the credit, but it takes everybody involved mm -hmm. and for sure you know, they're the reason that we've won races and um for won a championship sure. last year so i give it all up to them i can't be running this car i can't be driving this car without my crew guys and without my crew chiefs it doesn't run without them you know i literally trust these guys with my life whether it's mechanics or the driver i'm not sure how we'll, you would split that probably 50 50. i don't know it's it's hard to say he's being modest I'd say 70-30 in the mechanic's favor. Wow. I grew up around the sport. Ever since I was a kid, I was out here uh, watching my dad compete in the funny car category. Uh, he won a lot of races, broke a lot of records, um, you know, won multiple championships. I really am looking at, like, the funny cars or the dragsters. That's what I got my eye on, but we'll see. And now I get to be out here competing against him. I mean, that was the, the dream of mine since I was a kid. I told him, you know, I wanted to grow up. And be it's a, awesome a seeing a lot of women in the like NHRA. I told him he couldn't retire until I could come out here and compete against him. I used to come out to the racetrack as a kid with my sisters just to watch my dad. That's how we'd hang out with dad. He'd pack up and go on the road and uh, we'd follow him to racetracks. And Aww. these racetracks kind of became second homes to us. Everyone out here, teams, crew guys, crew chiefs kind of became family to us. So I fell in love with the sport at a young age. I think my dad was a little surprised that um, any of his kids had an interest in, in the sport, uh, but I think he was happy about it. He always said he wanted boys. He ended up with four daughters, and three of us ended up um, driving professionally. So wow. I think we surprised him a little bit, but we're a very tight-knit family. I get to compete against my dad in the funny car category. Uh, my sister, Brittany, she uh, just actually won the Top Field Championship last year. Wow. Season. If you would have asked me 15 Successful years ago, family. I'd be driving a Top Field car, there's no way I'd absolutely believe it. Um, I, 
I used to think top field drivers, semi car drivers were insane. Are the drivers it's paid well? Let me know in the comments. We get to travel and see a lot of the places, but we get to work together as a family, which is the most important thing. We're pink for the month of October 2018, a recognition of breast cancer awareness. That's awesome. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, that was, <sighs> I know that was meant to be an educational video, but that still gave me like, you know, some goosebumps. It, it's, it's so many things to take away from that video. Um, I love the fact that, you know, the driver appreciates and really values the team behind her. For me personally, the, the mechanic said that uh, he would give it a 50-50 weighting in terms of each, uh, so the driver and the mechanic's significance to the team. But honestly, I would I would say it's at least 70-30 in, in favor of the mechanics. Without the car, there is no, it, there's, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Drivers, obviously some drivers are better than others, but drivers are interchangeable. They're interchangeable. You know, without the car, and without the team functioning in synchrony, working quickly, being able to turn these engines around because I think they said that they can completely rebuild an engine in 30 minutes or less. That is just mind boggling. Anybody who's ever had to take their car, you know, for an engine, for, for blowing out an engine. <laughs> I don't think, obviously I know that it's completely different, but an engine job is a big, big job in a car. So, you know, these mechanics are amazing. These guys just work at such a fast speed, under pressure, under duress. Yeah, I, I, like, I like what I see about NHRA. I'm definitely gonna be watching a lot more of it for sure. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and keep throwing recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations, and I'll catch you in the next one.